I am good. Thank you for having me in your studio. Thanks for gracing a startup like ours. Thank you very much. What are we going to talk about today? We are talking about why India is unique to the world of retail. We are going to talk about how consumption has changed. We are also going to talk about startups in a bit. But Chris, you you have to tell me. You've got twenty one stores now in India. And what has been your experience with Indian customers? Uh, how are uh, Indians consuming today? The consumption story mm-hmm. in India is again unique. Okay. And compared to china mm-hmm. which is what we normally do mm-hmm. when it comes to talking about india mm-hmm. uh, indian growth story is all about consumption mm-hmm. it's less to do with exports at this point in time okay. and consumption is growing mm-hmm. very rapidly mm-hmm. the consumption story in india is also unique in the sense that india is more like a subcontinent mm-hmm. it's not a country very true and from north to south east to west the consumer mm-hmm. behavior is so different mm-hmm. that there are many markets here right and understanding that part mm. for the world is really important and that's why i feel that mm. indian story is unique it's unique also because of uh, the age uh, the median age of the country absolutely uh, aspirational yes. you've had two decades of retail experience and you've got what 10 years of working abroad also sure. and you've got 6 years of experience in walmart today yes. so typically how do you look at how consumption's changed over the previous decade to now so I think one of the key factors for changing consumption mm-hmm. is certainly of course the increase in per capita income okay. and as younger generation younger people mm-hmm. are coming into the mm-hmm. workforce mm-hmm. and overall there is growth mm-hmm. uh, if you look at the last 10 years also mm-hmm. the growth has been reasonably decent mm-hmm. but as you look at the next 10 years mm-hmm. india needs to grow at something like 8 to 9% mm-hmm. to be able to give a gainful employment to mm-hmm. a million Mm. which will come into the workforce every mm. month mm. for the next 10 years mm. so from that point of view and then when you look at the overall per capita income growth mm. and the way the consumption patterns are changing uh, greater reliance also on credit mm. by the younger consumers today mm. that's what is uh, the mm. bigger story as far as consumption is concerned and all this is happening like is a per capita income as digital media anything to do with it as uh, as more information the you know the explosion of smart or smartphone consumption feature phones uh, is that something that's aided uh, consumption in a way very clearly i think the social media as well as the digitization mm. has democratized the consumption mm. Mm. by democratization i mean that when information is available mm. to everyone mm. then you are able to make much more informed decision mm. and the power is clearly moving into the hands of the consumer mm. Uh, mm. rather than the retailer or the manufacturer which is very okay. evident okay because we all as retailers also have to eventually respect the consumer mm. and we talk about the omni channel yes. retail very true and the reason is very simple we mm. have to really cater to the customer mm. who wants to shop in many different ways mm. anytime mm. anywhere mm. and that's why i it, it, clearly the power is okay. now in the hands of the consumer so india has many buckets for me as an editor i travel uh, you know i look at uh, the tier 1 india which is almost like a global global city right we have bombay bangalore uh, and they have their own merits and demerits but you also are participating in smaller towns like rajmundry for example yeah you know, sure. what is walmart ethos in penetrating you're doubling your stores to 40 or 42 that's right? right that's right and and you're going to smaller towns yes uh, there's a reason behind that absolutely so mm. one is I, i think in terms of economics mm. i think tier 2 tier 3 towns mm. work well mm. in terms of the rental rates uh, mm. which need to be reasonable mm. to be able to make it work mm. but more importantly i think our mm. business model is such that we need 4 acres of land mm. on which we construct a box mm. which is 50 60000 square feet mm. and we have car park space for nearly 125 250 cars now this kind of land space is m- more possible outside and available only mm. in tier 2 tier 3 towns and that works very well but if you look at the consumer side i think the consumers and the customers in the tier 2 tier 3 towns also are highly aspirational well informed and they are not lagging far behind the mm. tier 1 or the metro cities and you will be really surprised uh, the the kind of uh, expectations and demands that they have uh, it's really fun to serve those customers is per capita rising in those towns too Yes, of course. The I job creation increases. The job creation is also so rural demand has been mm. picking up, mm. and uh, generally in terms of we, we we keep talking about traditional trade versus modern trade. So while modern trade is growing, mm. even the, in the tier two, tier three towns, I would say the 
it would be 20% plus in mm. terms of the way modern retail is growing. Mm. The traditional trade is also growing at 10% plus. Mm. So there is mm. supply side which is growing steadily. Mm. And on the demand side, uh, there, there is enough growth as far as these markets are concerned. So mom and pop stores are the core of your business in India at this point of time. Yes. Uh, you want to talk about their evolution from uh, being disorganized to becoming organized with you, right? Absolutely. Mm. I think uh, one of the fundamental advantages or that we bring uh, for small mom and pop shops is all under one roof. So they don't have to go to 10 different markets to be able to put together their complete assortment and they can just visit best price and that saves them the time right. that it takes and they can spend more time with their customers and their consumers in their shops. Right. Our mission is to make small businesses right. prosper right. and we focus on every single member. And these mom and pop shops, we work with them in terms of uh, the planograms, uh, the inventory management, mm. uh, even some, to some extent uh, uh, digitizing mm. uh, how to serve the customer and the customer experience uh, part. Uh, how many of these people have gone digital? Uh, Would you have a number? I won't have a number, mm. but it's happening right mm -hmm. now. Uh, we are we have introduced our B2B e-commerce mm -hmm. model okay. uh, and therefore we serve them in omni-channel way. So they can order they online and, and then you distribute to them and that's how it happens Absol through 3PL. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so they, they and they uh, do both. Mm -hmm. So a member mm -hmm. on occasions mm -hmm. places order through the mm -hmm. website or mm -hmm. through the smartphone mm -hmm. and on other occasions visits the store. Maybe when mm -hmm. his shop is closed mm -hmm. on a Tuesday or a mm -hmm. Friday. He is happy to visit the store mm. and place his orders as well. Mm. So he uses both mm. very conveniently. So you've been around in this country for a decade or more, uh, Walmart, the B2B side of it. Now Flipkart has been acquired by Walmart. Now you have a data pool that can serve customers end to end. You have one, you can serve the end consumer and you can serve the businesses too. Uh, are you going to marry the two? Uh, are you looking towards, uh, you know, data crunching based on, uh, you know, you know, trends in both sides? So let me correct a little. Mm -hmm. I think we have just announced our, yes, uh, in, uh, the uh, proposal to invest mm -hmm. in Flipkart yes. and currently it is under approval process yes. uh, of CCI. Mm -hmm. uh, having said that, I think, yes, the, there, is, there are clearly synergies mm -hmm. between uh, uh, Flipkart mm -hmm. and Walmart. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea is to keep the two businesses separate mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. run them independently. Uh, our cash and carry business mm -hmm. will con be continue to be managed mm -hmm. by a separate team okay. and Flipkart will continue to be very, managed very by good answer. Very good answer. But is data analytics the core of uh, retail in this country today? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think big data mm -hmm. does play an important mm -hmm. role. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot more opportunity when it comes to analytics and use of data and which we need to further work upon. So I wouldn't claim that we have really arrived. We just started the journey as far as the digital transformation and data, uh, big data analytics is concerned. But we are making good progress uh, as okay. Walmart. The, the mom and pop stores do throw in a lot of data, don't they? Uh, mom and pop stores also, yes, in terms of the consumption mm -hmm. behavior of the end consumer, mm -hmm. you get to know uh, from what the mom and pop shops are buying in different cities and yes. uh, different locations. Mm -hmm. And that's important. Mm -hmm. That's really mm. important to be able to create a customer value proposition mm. in every store. Mm. You uh, talked about your experience, right? The North, for example, consumes in larger cups versus in Andhra, they consume in smaller. You want to tell our audience that our audience is 18 to 35. You know, try, they're all businesses, small businesses. Uh, you, know, you want to understand Walmart's there, story. There, there was an interest, yeah. So Walmart story is all about mm. also getting mm. into the details mm. and going closer to mm. the customer, closer, closer to the consumer. Mm. So our current customer is the mom and pop shop mm -hmm. owner, but the end consumer also has to be kept in mind mm -hmm. as to who is the mom and pop shop serving. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting and we learn every day. Mm -hmm. It's not that we know mm -hmm. everything as of now. Just this visit to Rajamundri, I was okay. telling you. Rajamundri, the coastal town. The coastal, Andhra. yes, yes. So, and they, they were telling, so I discovered that a tea coffee cup in Rajamundri, they mm -hmm. want a 75 ml coffee cup. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the north, it is the 150 ml coffee cup which sells well, mm -hmm. the larger cups. Mm -hmm. Here, these are the smaller cups. Mm -hmm. And they said that, no, don't send us the larger cups. Mm -hmm. We want the smaller cups. 
So when you talk about, we talked about micro standardization. Yeah, that's a subject micro. that we want to get into. So yes. that's very important for you in uh, Walmart because India itself, you said by region, very different. Yes. Uh, you say, I mean, 100 kilometers radius of the consumption patterns might change. Right? Absolutely. Okay. So I think it's extremely important mm. in retail mm. all over the world. Mm. But in India, it assumes greater importance mm. considering the fact I said mm. that it's like a subcontinent yes. and north versus south the story. But, and therefore, uh, retail is a very local business. Mm. So you can standardize certain things, for instance, the size of the box, the layout of the box, etc. Mm. But when it comes to the customer value proposition, the assortment mm. that you have in the store, mm. you have to customize it to some extent. Okay. There are some commonalities, mm. but for instance, the kind of rice that is consumed in Andhra is different from what is consumed in Aurangabad or Amravati, where we have stores, mm. or same also in the north. Mm. So regional brands play an extremely important role in that whole process of localization. Okay, do you have brands of your own in India? Uh, we have our own brand as well, which is called Members Mark mm -hmm. and Right Buy. Mm -hmm. uh, however, our major play is in regional brands where we work with a lot of small and medium enterprises mm -hmm. and some national brands as well. Are these, national, are these smaller regional brands, do, do you see because of the digital revolution and by working with you, do you see them go global at some stage? Uh, uh, do you see them becoming national even? Absolutely. I think national story is already developing very well. Mm -hmm. And some of the medium, uh, small and medium enterprises are going national with us mm -hmm. as we speak. Going global depends on how well can they build their own supply chain and how be able to manage the scale because there is, it's a more an issue of scale. The demand exists for Indian products in our overall uh, value chain. And just to answer that question, mm. we separately have a global sourcing office in Bangalore mm. where we buy in India for 13 global markets. Mm. So that business is also growing mm. very well. But so, that's a separate So, operation. I mean, we have a lot of young brands out there, first time brands. I've seen, a, I've seen an explosion of Indian startups in the brand side. So they can come contact you? Sure, of mm. course. Of that's course. A, that's we, an opportunity. We welcome. I think one uh, few things about mm. Walmart, which are somewhat a myth, mm. it's not difficult to work with us. Okay, there you have it. It's not difficult to work, work with Walmart. They're not the we, old behemoth they are, but they're very modern. We there. are approachable mm -hmm. and we want, uh, I think, the uh, we want to bring in the mm. agility mm. and the speed. Mm. Uh, one thing which we continuously learn from mm. startups particularly mm. is this fail fast, fail cheap concept. Mm. And you as and yourself as a leader has brought that into in, into the organization within India, right? Absolutely. You want to talk about that a bit? So, for instance, the way startups organize their teams mm. when they do a pilot mm. or when they do a new concept, mm. the concepts of pods and squads, mm. etc. Mm. That's something we just introduced in our mm. office as well. And in terms of the way people sit together, mm. we are planning to change that as well to uh, learning from what startups do like collaborative uh, more collaborative mm. more collaborative and mm. speed speed mm. is of essence mm. rather than and cutting the bureaucracy mm. is extremely I, important i liked it earlier you told me that uh, you know there were you when you had all these pilots running these people might not have necessarily reported to you in the past but you went and said that because they are pilots, they report to me. That's right. Uh, how that's difficult right. was that for you? There's team? an example where mm. we're doing a fulfillment center mm. concept. Mm. It's a pilot concept mm. which we're doing in Mumbai. Mm. And the person who is heading mm. it is reporting to me directly. Mm. That's because the speed of decision making mm. is really important. Mm. And therefore, all the bottlenecks can be cleared much faster. Okay. I think it is critical. The top-down sponsorship mm. for new concepts mm. is extremely and important. And even startups. Absolutely. You know, I mean, our audience is also, you know, being 18 to 35, most of them are startups and they would want to know, uh, can startups work at the work with Walmart in India? There are startups which are already working with How us. How many have you worked with? Uh, More than I 10? wouldn't put, uh, certainly, of course. Certainly. The, on, the, on the tech side, mm. for instance, there are a few which are working. Mm. We recently introduced, I wouldn't name it, but mm. we recently introduced mm. a communication platform, okay. which is a startup, which is not our legacy system. And it's working extremely well. Uh, the we, we are in the process of discussing with a couple mm -hmm. of other startups as to how they can help mm -hmm. uh, solve for certain uh, digital transformation issues and problems. In interesting. So you you don't run a typical accelerator. Uh, you don't uh, you don't. You, do you, how do you scout these people? 
I mean, I mean, I'm curious to know. So that's the best keep, kept secret in Walmart, it seems. While everyone else is getting their PR done with accelerator programs and whatnot, you, you kept it quiet. Why is I, that? I think because of probably the brand equity, I would say, mm -hmm. because Walmart is quite well known. Mm -hmm. I think I get a lot of people approaching me also directly, as well as my leadership team and other members. And we constantly, in my, I certainly constantly emphasize this to my leadership team, that it is extremely important to stay close to this younger generation and to the startups. Why is that so? They have brilliant ideas. They come up with some path-breaking ideas which can cut the amount of time we take in several innovative. activities. Innovative, very innovative. Mm -hmm. So that, that, and it's it's purely the experience that I have, uh, the reverse mentoring concept that I was earlier talking to you about. I think it's a very powerful concept, learning from younger generation mm -hmm. and adopting to stay relevant mm -hmm. in the future. Mm -hmm. That is very critical for me. F fascinating point. It's a question of leadership. When you came over on Wal in uh, Walmart India, right? And you started implementing these things. How difficult was it to get people to understand reverse mentoring? Do you want to touch upon that a bit? How did I, you, I, I mean, you have to change a little bit of the DNA. I know. I'm not saying that mm. we have implemented reverse mentoring mm. in Walmart. Mm. I'm not claiming that mm. at all. Personally, I can tell you that I believe in it mm. and I mm. practice it. Okay. But I do recommend that mm. to everyone mm. uh, because at a certain stage, if you want to really be relevant for the future, I strongly believe that this reverse mentoring is very import important. Important. Mm. I learned it from, I can name the gentleman from whom I learned it mm. the first time two, three years ago, mm. and that was Mr. Adi Godrej. Okay. He does a fantastic job of this reverse mentoring, mm. and he spoke about it in one of the events which I was attending, mm. and I started implementing it for myself. I'm sure some of our leaders in Walmart mm. do it. We don't have it as a proper institutionalized mm. process mm. in Walmart India, but that's something we should certainly do. So you, you have to unlearn yourself, is that what you mean? Or there is collaboration between the young and the old? Is that what you're saying? It's not always a hierarchical approach anymore? It should mm. not, yeah, it should, it is not, certainly in, in Walmart mm. India, it is not a hierarchical mm. approach. Mm. I think it's important for people to feel that they're all equal. They're treated certainly mm. very, uh, as equals. Mm. There are no hierarchies mm. and there are no mm. class systems at all. Mm. And approachability to the senior leadership is extremely important so that mm. resources are allocated with speed mm. for certain things mm. which really matter for the future. Okay, I want to touch upon even women entrepreneurship. Uh, it's a growing trend in India. 40% of our audience is also women. Uh, do you see that becoming, is, is it very important for the nation, the economy? I think should more women uh, come and participate at Walmart? Or are you, or do you see women coming and pitching to you? There are, I, I strongly believe that mm. And Walmart strongly believes mm. that mm. women economic empowerment mm. is an extremely mm. uh, critical issue. Mm. And I believe that in India, mm. gender equality mm. is an important social issue. Mm. So towards this end, mm. we have done, taken a number of steps in terms of women in factories program, mm. uh, women in farms program, women okay. in retail program. Internally, diversity and inclusion mm. is an important agenda in terms of mm increasing the number of women who are working for Walmart in India. Uh, very recently, that is in 2016, we started this Women Entrepreneurship Development Program. Oh, you have? You yes, already have this we program? we already have. Okay, the what, first, what the is first that? Plan. Is it also technology? 30, 32 women. No, it's not just technology. Mm. It is any woman, and it is truly, it has to be a truly women-owned business and mm. women-controlled business, which mm. means they must have 51% stake. Mm and they must be running it and mm. they must be controlling it. Mm. So 32 women, and it's a global pro It's mm. a global concept mm. ra implemented through WeConnect International mm. and an organization called Think Through Consulting. Mm. Okay. And 32 women mm. owned businesses enrolled mm. in the first batch. Mm. They went underwent a training for the next, for the nine months in mm. terms of mm. certain life skills as well as business skills, and they graduated. We launched a second batch, which was 61 mm. women. So, so far, 93 women mm. have been, 93 women owned businesses mm. have gone through this program. And this, and they supply back to Walmart or whatever they're, they're doing? So, 11 of them mm. have been integrated into our supply chain. What kind of business? Uh, home, generally, I think home decor products are the major ones. But, for instance, one lady who is supplying honey, mm. uh, who has made it big, uh, Forget the name. No problem. Uh, but yeah, change their life, right? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. That is deep. That is real. Real impact there, right? Sure. Uh, and and for that, you know, you had to put the process in place. 
or did it come naturally from global standards or very no. unique to india no it in a way is unique to india uh, yeah. it's uh, it it is we we have been yeah. in a way pioneers in terms of pushing it really hard because we see that opportunity in india and we have been attracting we want to attract more women on businesses to yeah. come forward and take advantage of this program so yeah. we do that awareness creation as well do you think all these people women and men included uh, is there india's brand story waiting to explode I see a lot of large think, companies dominating so far. So. I, I I think so. Mm. I think so. When I see the energy and the creativity of the mm. the startup world, I think it's a matter of time. It's a matter of time. What you, would you give it five years, ten years? Next I would day? probably say between five and ten mm. years. These what things is, do take okay. time in terms okay. of scaling up. And uh, mm. if you really talk about the scale, then maybe between five and ten years. So there, that's where you bring in. What advice would you give to young people starting up? uh should they focus on the core product first and then go after money or would you also advise that if there are angel investors uh, vcs go support the ecosystem so honestly mm. i think today i learn so much from mm. the startup mm. i don't think i would be in a good position to really advise startups so one is about you my continuing to wanting to learn know. but having said so mm. i think they there should be absolutely no hesitancy mm. in approaching mm. large multinationals mm. or indian companies mm. for with your ideas and i i know that my ceo peer group mm. and i am a part of many such peer groups they are all very keen on supporting the startup infrastructures as a, st a startup ecosystem okay. so it's it's just we always wait for mm. people to approach us mm. and if you reach out to the ceos i'm sure you will get great response so they have to focus on their product that's what you're saying just come absolutely. present yourself absolutely uh, but don't don't fall back don't think you can't do it you're saying this era in digital you can make it you can make it and i've seen mm. that some of the products which excite me mm. uh, they may not be getting traction at the mm. lower level at mm. times mm. so it's about believing in what you're doing mm. and which you are good at and uh, making sure that you get the right audience it's amazing so you are, again as a leader when you notice something that you think works for your company yes. you champion it absolutely you've done that in the past. i have done that in the past. Uh, any particular example uh, the honey seller was one of them there are, there are many so mm. this lady another lady i remember the name of mm. the lady babita mm. gupta okay. and she had a mm -hmm. great concept mm -hmm. she actually uh, helped her house help mm. to work on projects for uh home decor okay and the house helps life changed mm. so a lot more people started approaching her and she converted it into a business idea and we started supporting Now her she find you of, so they, it was through our team it was not me okay. it, the she mm. the team she approached the team the team responded positively and she's now a part of our supply chain very so, interesting yes so it's not about only technology products mm -hmm. it's not about only mm -hmm. high tech mm -hmm. uh, concepts that mm -hmm. we are running after mm -hmm. or technical concepts it's about simple uh, small scale uh, manufacturing concepts also mm. which we encourage okay there's digital india there's the old india and and you know in between there is uh, there is a lot of opportunity do you see them merging in the next decade i think adopting digital is an imperative mm. for everyone the digital i wouldn't call it digital mm. disruption because mm. that has negative connotations and mm. that creates fear mm. i would say that is the digital innovation or digital transformation which mm. is taking place mm. and taking place with speed and for everyone to really embrace it is really critical mm. because that's where the consumer is going that's where the young generation is and to, to be to, like i said to stay relevant as even as a business mm. it's really important to undergo so any entrepreneur out there has to focus on a digital strategy i without doubt without doubt without doubt and without that they can't scale globally today uh, uh, it's tough yeah mm -hmm. it's in today's mm -hmm. world i think mm -hmm. it's a, it's become an imperative so it's a, you you it as a digital as a distribution channel or an information channel uh for me i mean information is basic of mm -hmm. course information mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. data is basic mm -hmm. but in terms of uh, productivity enhancement mm. and speed to market mm. digital plays a tremendous role mm. so just let me give an example i think customer feedback mm. was always 
the mechanism always existed and the physical mechanism existed and it was always challenging to yeah. respond with speed. But having digitized it now and when, when the customers come and when they leave the store and give their feedback, it's instantaneous yeah. in terms of analytics that gets captured. And the, the way we are able to get back to our customers, yeah. we can like real time yeah. or maybe same day yeah. or next day, we can just approach them and ask them for their uh, feedback or whatever. Absolutely. Right? You know, quick question. You also, t we want to talk about farmers. Uh, how are you helping farmers in this country? Direct sourcing mm. from farmers mm. in certain states, mm. uh, we had started on a pilot basis mm. uh, about two, three years ago. Mm. We have done it before 2013, we have done it in a much bigger way, but subsequently since mm. 2014, uh, when we started concentrating on or focusing on our mm. cash and carry business, we restarted the programs in Andhra, Telangana, Uttar Pradesh, like Sunara Prayas in Uttar Pradesh, where small, we were focusing also on women farmers. Very recently, uh, Walmart Foundation announced a grant of uh, uh, $4 million. $4 million for in farmers? In Andhra Pradesh. Wow, for program a, for a market a readiness project for small farmers mm -hmm. uh, through ICRISAT in Andhra Pradesh. So we are committed to mm -hmm. uh, working with these small farmers. Mm -hmm. I think it's important for us. Mm -hmm. uh, creation of shared value is mm -hmm. a concept that we follow. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it basically means that strategically, it mm. is important for the company mm. and it is good for the community. It's good for the stakeholders, all the stakeholders in the okay. community. Uh, that's what we do. Quick question. Next five years, uh, where is India heading? What should we focus on to uh, be a great nation? I have, I believe in the India story mm. immensely mm. and that is, and Walmart believes in it mm. uh, immensely. Mm. I think the Government is really focused. I've seen it in the on the ground in the mm. last three four years. Government is really focused on this ease of doing business in India, mm. and that's for real. Okay. The I think the very fact that we are now down to uh, hundred mm. uh, in terms of ranking and the focus is to go the ranking less is than improving. fifty. That's what you mean. Less yeah. than fifty in mm. the next two to three years, and there are concrete steps which are mm. measures which are in place. Uh, when we interact with Invest India or mm. when we interact with the state governments, mm. I think India is headed absolutely in the right direction. The kind of investment that is going in, mm. the infrastructure development, mm. that is going to change the story Dramatic. as well. And GST so has been very good. GST you. is excellent mm. because it is one nation, one tax philosophy mm. and it simplifies the way we operate in the country as a retailer. Mm. We don't need 29 warehouses. We mm. can just do with one maybe warehouse. five. Maybe Fantastic. Five. Maybe five. Fantastic. You know, that's great. But shall we take audience questions? Sure, of course. Okay. This is uh, Anish Sunu who says, uh, what is the next big business opportunity for you? I think we are focusing on what we have just now recently announced mm. and that is the most important one. It is currently uh, undergoing an approval process and there are uh, several synergies between the two companies that we need to realize. So I believe we need to just focus on that at this point in time and not uh, let our attention Div divert. be diverted. Okay. Absolutely. We, so Anish, hope that answers your question. Next one's by Arun Kumar. Uh, what is the future of Walmart in India? It's a similar question, but what is the immediate future for you? The immediate future when you talk about, one is of course the, the investment that we have announced, mm. but that apart, uh, as far as our cash and carry business mm. is concerned, we are doubling our number of stores from 21 to 42 in the next three mm. years. We will mm. be tripling our sales turnover. Mm. We will also be investing in the e-commerce space. Mm. And most importantly, I think we are launching a Kirana development program where we'll work, uh, we have a, we have a uh, plan to work mm. more, much more closely with resellers mm. in terms of uh, those who want to start a new mm. shop help them start a new shop and those who are already having shops help them grow financing absolutely it's not financing we don't get into financing okay. because that's not our core competency mm. but in terms of helping them grow their business uh, by adopting certain techniques of modern retail while maintaining mm. their dna of very strong customer service mm. i think that would that is the opportunity that okay, okay. Has. this is directly related to this how are you mm. empowering indian sellers uh, number one, mm. just the concept of all under one roof reduces their requirement for inventory. Mm. They can come and shop with us three to four times a week. Mm. 
not necessarily have to stock up for a week or 10 days or 15 days. That is one. Second is in terms of providing them much wider variety all under one roof. And third is working closely with each one of them in terms of the modern techniques, how to do planograms, how to improve the space productivity, uh, in terms of even uh, in future, the e-commerce connectivity that is required. Okay, those that are the few things that you do. Okay, that this is from Aaron Karthik who says, as a customer, we love the services of Amazon. He's obviously a digital buyer, but he says, can Walmart provide these kind of services uh, with a variety of products, including a B2B e-commerce maybe uh, yeah, for the Indian market? So currently we are focused on B2B yeah. uh, and cash and carry yeah. business. Yeah. Uh, uh, we don't have a play in, uh, uh, in detail the, space. Yes, because that's and by we, regulation. Right? We, that's because of uh, that. So yeah, primarily. But uh, I think the big opportunity also is in, mm -hmm. the, eco in the cash and carry mm -hmm. space and working with Kiranas as well as hotels, restaurants and caterers and that's our big focus. Okay, great. Uh, last question by Sweetie Shimal. She says, uh, potential, a lot of potential startups have built a, a con uh, built a conception around getting investments for their product and servicing is way too difficult in India. That means they conceptualize the product but selling it in India is difficult. Now, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, what is the hype in the investment business? Apparently, I think what she's trying to say is there's a lot of VC money trying to go after a few com few businesses, few trends, and that you know startups do probably don't get funded or maybe they also feel uh, difficult to find uh, buyers. At, at times, I think, even among startups at times, I believe that focus is important. Mm -hmm. I believe that mm -hmm. energy is limited. And even if there is a lot of funding at the initial stage, I think with focus, mm -hmm. one can really develop something mm -hmm. which is scalable. Mm -hmm. So future scalability has to be kept in mind. Mm -hmm. And with focus and maybe fewer products, that may be the way to go. So you're basically saying that there is always hype out there. But if yes. your product, you're focused on what you want, yes. you will achieve uh, funding or what not even more. I, I think so. Okay, uh, so on that note, it's been a wonderful interview. And if you want, if startups have to be mentored by you, how do they contact you? Do they write to you on LinkedIn? Or is there a common startup email for Walmart? So let me put it this way. If mm. if you agree to a mutual mentoring, mm. <laughs> then please write to me on krish.ir, mm. K-R-I-S-H dot I-Y-E-R mm. at walmart.com. So there you go. He's one of the first CEOs in my show was not value judged anybody or he's not gone ahead and said things that hurt you. On that note, it's been wonderful. Thanks for being in yourstory.com, sir. Now, I'll see you again soon in Delhi. Sure. Thank you.